Well, how do there, chums? Tis I, Captain of the Steves. And today, chums, I'm going to be playing that Light No Sky. Yeah, our little own variant of Light No Fire inside of No Man's Sky. So I'm on a planet. I'm playing this solo. So this is for anybody that doesn't really want to do PvP, the multiplayer aspect, or can't. You know, the people that might be on Nintendo Switch. So let's jump on over into game, shall we? chick pa Sweet! So, oh. Okay, well, I'll do that, chums. Right, so this is where we've sort of left off. Now, we haven't, I haven't played this for a little bit, to be honest. But now, I need to be able to get myself some uh, chart maps. I mean, I think I've got the chart maps anyway. We went up and we got them last episode. So we've got two for this sort of structure of building. So we're going to go check out these buildings. And if there are any NPCs there, we're going to talk to them. Um, I'm hoping that I get a secure facility that I can break into so we can get an Atlas card. So I can get more navigational data each day from the cylinders that I placed inside of my base. So here we go. So yeah, we're going to get two of those sort of buildings. Now I can't use my ship. That's the whole thing with this. We can't use exocrafts. The only technology I can use is a technology that I find on the planet. And at this stage, now that I'm going to be going out on quests, I'm going to change the difficulty from normal to survival. Mm, in survival mode. Okay. Now it says it's an extreme sentinel planet. And I think it does that with every single thing inside of uh, survival mode but they they shouldn't be able to get me inside of my base so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna go through my base and go through the back and through the front door hopefully that that would that would sort of shake them off for a little bit i'm gonna highlight them the facility and i'm gonna call in my bird or or, or flying creature i should say that's not my flying creature that'd be cheating <laughs> and i'm gonna have my beetle i think let's go little beetle Right, fly me to the moon and let me fly amongst the stars. And it says it's going to take nine hours. It's not going to take nine hours. You're looking at probably about, you know, 30 minutes per hour. So even still, it's probably going to take me about three hours to fly there. I know, it's freaking insane, right? If, you're, if you've got one of Miyogi's bird creatures, you're looking at maybe 15 minutes per hour. And if you've got one of um, Cynical's giant snaky worm things you're looking at about what five minutes per hour it's insane but yeah this is going to take me a month of sundays to get there but as i'm flying over this landscape i am looking for things so i'm looking for stuff like um uh, like little uh, damaged machineries damaged tech all that sort of shenanigans and i'm just taking in the sights and the vistas of this beautiful world but yeah, I'll let you know roughly how, how long it takes for an hour or so to pass um, on this little beetle flying there. Because it, it might not be 30 minutes an hour. I, I don't really know the, the flight speed of this beetle right now. I was hoping it might drop down as we were flying, but obviously it hasn't. You can see there, look, there's a point of interest, so I might circle back around to that. I mean... It's 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 going to be a journey, okay? So you can take your time with this, but it's my first mission, you know. That's that's the beauty of this. You you're not racing against anything. And if you do want to bring in like a, a campsite or something, just bring in your ship. And you're using your ship as a tent, okay? So you're just using it as a mobile sort of tent. It's a campsite. That's the way to look at it. It's not to get you any closer. Just jump in, jump out. Make a little save, just in case your game crashes, anything like that. I'm just going to hit this up. That's going to give me another waypoint to do another day, maybe, you know? There we go. And I, I, I spotted another waypoint, a, a minor settlement, just on, over yonder hill. So you know what? That's closer, so I'm going to go visit that quickly. Okay, so um, where's my creature gone? Yeah, so I have to despawn my creature. Ah, yeah! Dang it! You can tell I don't use creatures often, can't you? There you go, right, there we go. Uh, call him my beetle! Let's go! We've got, we've got minor settlements to visit, my friend. Yeah, so let's just fly over here. Because it's only like 480 used that way, so it's not going to take me long to get there. There you go, see what I mean? Lovely. Zoom! 
And each one of these we visit, we're going to get navigational data anyway. So although that I want to get an Atlas, cast, Atlas Pass level 1, I am getting stuff from here. The Sentinels have just spotted me. So I'm just going to leg it inside of here and get a bit of cover. Sweet. Oh, look. Multi-tool there, but it's not as good as my wand anyway. But it's an A-class. Very nice. And there's a Galactic Trade Terminal, so if I have got anything I need to sell, now would be the time to sell it to free up a little bit of um, storage space. So I might as well get rid of some... Yeah, I might as well get rid of that, my know. Um, oh, we've got Basalt there as well that I could probably sell. Don't overly need Basalt. Don't know how I managed to even get it. Corvax casing. Technically, I should have kept those Corvax cubes just in case I meet any NPCs. I could have given it to them and one favour. I keep the Corvax casing. I should have kept those Corvax cubes. But there we go. Um, yeah, um, I'm going to go to buy and let's see if there's anything worth buying in here. No, there, there really isn't at this stage, I don't think. I mean, I could get some Starship launch thruster fuel just so I can bring my camp in a little bit closer to me. I can only afford one anyway. All right, I do. Now, there is an NPC here. He's not going to give me any missions, though, or anything like that. And I, I'm pretty much low on units now. I mean, you can you can sometimes get drop pod navigational data from them. And that's a good way to sort of explore the planet. Oh, great. Extreme storm. And sentinels right outside the door. Might as well wait for the storm to pass, eh, people? Let's sit in here for a bit. So it's a very different way of playing. It's far more relaxed. And you're going to take ages to get to your actual markers. But as you move into your markers, use your ship as like a portable campsite, visit those markers, explore them, find other NPCs, see if you can find some side quests. Treat it like an RPG. And what I would say, Jums, if you are doing this solo, you're on the Switch, you're not doing multiplayer, it's not part of what me and Ricey and Cynical are doing. Once you actually reach that map point, once you've travelled all that nine hours in game time, you know, once you get to that place, there's nothing to stop you from putting down another base computer and maybe a, a teleporter site. So at least you've got fast travel to get back to that region of the planet again. Because I'd imagine light no sky or light no fire when it actually drops, it's going to have some kind of fast travel. So it's it's trying... Yeah, I mean, kind of making the rules up as I go along with this, to be fair, people. But yeah, you play as you want to play, basically. Just have a bit of fun with it. It's just exploring the one planet. How you do that is up to you. Um, if you do use ships, even if you use a ship, it's, it's up to you. But I wouldn't. Um, yeah, I use flying creatures. Oh, chums, I've just spotted this has actually got an NPC that's wandering around inside of here. So let's go and chat to him. Some of these sites have them. Not all, but here we go. Let's talk to him. Sweet. Okay. Um, I'm going to give you the magnetized ferrite. I'll give you the rarest of rare, my friend. Sweet. Yes, we learned a new callbacks word. Lovely. I talk to him again. Sometimes they, 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 no. I was hoping that I might be able to give him some of those Corvax trinkets and up my ranking. Okay, right. Where's that? Oh, what the fudge are you, mate? There's a little creature there. It looks like a little ball. How bizarre. Hey, oi, come back here, you. Right. Okay, we're looking for that um, building that we had before. There's nine hours that way. How close is that one? Is that one any closer? Six hours. You know what? We're going we're gonna to head to the resource depot instead. Can I? Yes, we've marked it. Oh, no! I fell off my beetle. This is a sentinel-infested hellhole. Come here. Come here. Don't strand me, you git. Okay, so I'm going to fly to the one that's actually six hours away, now that we've got it locked in. And uh, I will see you if I come across anything interesting on the way there. I mean, there's damaged machinery over there. There was one back at that other building that I was at earlier. I could have hit that up too. Yeah, so missed opportunities there. I'm just going to stop at major waypoints, to be honest, at the moment, people. Okay, so I've been travelling on my uh, little beetle for roughly about, I don't know, 15 minutes maybe. 
And you can see there that the arrival time has now dropped to five hours in travel. Something that I must point out is the bar in the bottom left hand corner. My life support. You can see there it's got a double chevron arrow. It's going down mightily quick. And if I wanted to recharge that, I have only got some support gel left. I have no oxygen on my person. So as I'm flying around, especially when it hits night time, I'm looking for faint red glows. Like you see that little patch just there. That's going to be a little patch of oxygen. So I'm just going to jump off of my little airborne friend. And I'm going to run over here as quickly as I can and grab it. Because sentinels are going to get rather angry at me rather quickly on this planet. And in survival mode. So I'm going to grab all this, stash it away. And that's going to help me go a little bit further. Also, if you see a load of hazardous flora, um, that can help you massively. Uh-oh. Where's my freaking beetle? There he is. And ride. Go on, little beetle. Yes. Coolio. And we're off again. And I'm keeping an eye out for more oxygen because it's basically my fuel. Rather than fuel this uh, little beetle I'm on, I'm fueling myself with oxygen. Uh, if you can buy yourself a load of life support gel, you might want to or something. I mean, there's there's two oxygen plants there, but it's it's hardly worth jumping off just for two. You know, I, I'm waiting until I see a big batch of loads. Um, but yeah, there we are. Um, it is what it is. So it's just a case of travelling and it's still five hours. I was hoping it would drop down another nodule as I'm flying, but, you know, I reconvened the last time that it changed. OK, now sometimes this can happen. Sentinels manage to track me and um, they're after me. They're searching for me. I'm on my beetle. I'm flying away as rapidly as I can. They don't send in their interceptors. Just wanted to show you that, you know, you can actually get rid of sentinels quite easy if you're on a flying mount such as this lovely beetle. Anyway, we're still heading over this way. I, I stopped off at a point of interest. I didn't stop off to get more oxygen. I stopped off at some little caravan type looking site, hit up the save point, grabbed the navigational data and the sentinels locked onto me. There we go. We managed to get them deactivated. I haven't seen any big patches of oxygen for some time. Now, you can do a little sweep scan while you're actually on your beetle like that to highlight different points. But, um, yeah, it hasn't that highlighted much oxygen in nearby proximity. Yeah, scanner's recharging. And scan. Zoom. Yeah, not much oxygen around at the moment. So if you see, it's a bit of a scarcity. It's a bit of a, a rarity. So yeah, fun times. Now I have got that refiner back at my camp. I could have maybe created some oxygen before heading out, which would have been a better plan, especially since I'm traveling like five hours. Yeah, I might have to stop, pitch a tent, you know, bring in my ship, make a little campsite and just go on a bit of a oxygen farming sort of jaunt. If I find a cave, I could put a camp down there get myself a load of cobalt and maybe craft a load of uh, life support gels that might be an idea yeah might have to do that one once we get a little bit further once i'm like you know four hours there or something like that i'd look for a building or structure and then look for a little cave i think that might be an idea because i'm not spotting much oxygen from my little beetly mount heck no i'm not but what a lovely planet to be doing this on. Hopefully if you are doing this at home and you're playing along, you found yourself a lovely planet. I mean, there's nothing to stop you from using this planet that I'm on right now, you know. Oh, look, there's another one of those beacons. I could always hit that up. That'll find me a structure in fairly close proximity that I might be able to do all that stuff from. Let's, um, let's see if that's the case, shall we? Boom. Let's see if it, what it finds me. Is it going to find me something in close proximity? Hmm. Minor settlement detected. Oh, my days. That's freaking miles away. All right, well, we won't be going there in a hurry. Okay, so it looks as though a lot of what I've got around me is quite some distance. Oh, a little tip for you. Look the way you want to go. And then face the opposite direction and call in your creature then. 
it's going to spawn facing the way you want to go. And then you can just hit ride then. And then you don't have to do much adjusting. As a little tip! There we go. Well, chums, I've come across a giant colossal archive. Now, I'm thinking this would serve as a pretty decent waypoint. And perhaps somewhere where maybe I could set up a little mini base camp of operations. Maybe go and get myself a load of um, life support gel. I might even be able to buy it at the terminal here. And this just feels like a place where it feels like a giant player hub. So what I might do is I might put a base on this and claim it as my own. As like a mid sort of point. And then if there are any journey points that are far out like these, at least I can get semi-close, you know. It still hasn't dropped down an hourage of time flying on my little beetle. But yeah, I think this feels fair for me to have it as a waypoint of sorts. So I'm going to stick down a base computer. And now that I'm in this place of sanctuary and cover, I'm just going to put myself in creative mode to do that rather than go and harvest all the materials and get shot to shite by sentinels. I'm going to call this as being a safe hub. So I'm going to stick the difficulty into creative mode. And um, yeah, I'm going to claim it as mine. In fact, it's a little rule for me. I'm going to say as long as a place has got a landing pad or a beacon to call your ship into, if you can use navigational data to call in your ship as a campsite, I'm going to say you're allowed to claim that as a base and put in a teleporter so you can get back there. That's just my own little mini rule if you're playing solo. That rule doesn't really apply to Cynical and Rice's instance if you're playing multiplayer yet. I might have to talk to them about that idea. We'll see. I'm just going to call this Light Nose Sky Archive and upload my base. Boom. Done. Now, obviously, this doesn't look like something out of Light Nose Sky. You know, it's, it's blatantly technologically advanced. So I just put down some solar panels and bits and bobs just to keep it going. I've also got a bioreactor just to get it going. But that's it. Anyway, let's see if I can buy some life support gel. Buy. Um, right, okay. I am still in creative mode, so I don't really want to be in creative mode at this stage. I can put myself back into normal, because I want a little bit of a challenge when it comes to buying things. And buy. I'm going to buy... Oh, the life support gel has mysteriously vanished. Dang it! Okay, I was hoping to do that. Oh well, it looks like I might just have to craft life support gel. So go into here. So to make my life support gel, I need carbon and dehydrogen jelly. And it looks like I can make two at the moment. Nice. So maybe I need some more dehydrogen. Okay, that I might be able to do from here. So yeah, I'm going to go out. I'm going to see if I can get myself some more dehydrogen jelly and some more carbon. So there's lots of trees this way. So let's head on over this way. Now in normal mode, there's less chance of sentinel shooting the shite out of me, let's face it. So there we go. I'm going to grab some carbon. And I'm going to grab some dehydrogen jelly as well. Boom. And here's some dehydrogen just over here. Oh, there's a sentinel there. Is he going to be interested in me still? Not as interested. But as I'm harvesting it, he's still going to get slightly interested. Cool. So as I'm resource gathering, I'm just going to be in normal mode because I'm close to the actual base facility that I put down. I think that's fair for my own save. I mean, if you want to up your level of difficulty, leave yourself in survival mode, you know? If you've got, really got limited time, if you really wanted to, while you're inside of that facility, stay in creative mode and then just buy yourself a load of stuff. You know, It's your game at the end of the day. When you're playing solo, you don't have to abide by the rules of the multiplayer aspect. So play as you want to play. It's a sandbox, you know? Play according to your time, is what I'm saying. And look at that, I'm getting a lot of oxygen as well. Well, I say a lot, I'm getting a couple of oxygen. 
four per tree. There is a hazardous floor around here as well, though, that I can zap in the face. Well, I say I can zap, it's actually hidden in a rock. Kaboom. Oh, great. Sentinels are angry at me. Need some more dehydrogen, so I'd head towards the blue marker over here. Oh, looks like we left a bit. Lovely. More dehydrogen over this way. Cool. Oh, more hazardous flora. Nice oxygen. So I'm just using this base of operations to get myself a load of oxygen and life support gel for my travel. Because you saw how much oxygen I'm using flying my little beetle. And it's going to take me five hours to get myself to that location, according to the game time. So this is, this is a journey and a half to clear one of these map markers. Now I was thinking I might be able to clear maybe three map markers per episode. I'd be lucky to do one on this planet. Now you might be lucky and have a smaller planet where everything is closer together. I've chosen a planet that's quite large and everything is spaced massively apart. So it depends what sort of sort of affair you're after, you know? Pick your planet wisely is what I would say. Okay, right. So we're heading over that way, five hours that way. And I don't have to go back to that that place, you know, there wasn't anything I could really buy there that's gonna overly help me much. So here we go calling my beetle and I'm off I'm off but at least I've got that teleporter site there now which has now unlocked me the ability to maybe interact with ship owners traders the uh, galactic trading hub so I can sell stuff it's a good point of interest for me to have on my repertoire of places that I can teleport to and fast travel to okay so now that I'm back on my adventure I'm going to put the difficulty back into survival mode. Now, the reason that I put myself in survival mode is if I do die, if sentinels do kill me off, or if the events of the planet kill me off, or I don't top up my hazard protection or life support when I should, and I die, everything that's on my person, everything that I've gathered, all of this disappears. I lose all of that. That's what's at forfeit, that's what's at stake. There's no picking up your grave inside a survival mode, getting your stuff back. That's gone. You lose everything. So it's quite risky going on these giant journeys if you're ill-prepared. Okay, so anyway, I'm heading off. I'll let you know if anything interesting happens. Oh, what I didn't do is, is craft my life support gel, isn't it? So what I now need to do is go and craft the dehydrogen jelly. Okay, I'm going to get 12 of them, and I should be able to craft a load of these now. There we go. I'm good for ages. And off we go. Yeah, so that's me refueled. I'm, I'm calling this episode a success so far, people. Just as soon as I hit stop recording, it dropped to four hours from the five hours, and I didn't do many edits in that footage. So... I don't think this is a very long video. So you can see there, I've already knocked two hours off of this. And I think the total time so far has been about, what, 25 minutes maybe for two hours journey time, roughly. So what's that? It's about 12.5 minutes per hour. If, if that's even a unit of time to measure. That's not too bad. So I should be there maybe in just under an hour maybe. Oh, I've come across an interesting building here. It looks like some sort of observatory. It might have an NPC. I'm going to head inside. I mean, I've been doing this a lot as well, haven't I? I've been stopping off. It's not like a direct journey as well. Hello. It's just nice to see an NPC, you know. Sweet. There we go. Hmm. I give you the metal ferrite, my friend. Oh no, 
I must have given him the wrong one. Whoops. Oh, well. I'll have that. And that's... Is that the only thing in this building? I'm guessing so. I need the Atlas Pass to be able to open those doors. Oh, hold on. There's this. Cool. Hopefully we're going to have a little puzzle or something. Oh, look. He's moving again. Maybe I might be able to re-interact with him. Okay, so 2738, 2738. It looks like the digits are moving to the left, doesn't it? It looks like they're travelling left, I believe. Or, or are they going right? 2738. So, two, seven, that, yeah, so that's come over there. So I think the next one is going to start with a 3. So it's going to be 3278. There you go. Boom. Oh, okay, looks like I fudged that one up. Hello, mate. Are you still acting odd? Can I can I give you something else? No. All right. Fine. All right. Well, look, there's like little pot of tea there. I do like a good cup of tea. I honestly, do. All right. Well, what's inside this yellow tub? Ooh, a projectile ammo. Lovely. Nick your plants while I'm here, my friend. Oh no, I'm not. I'm going to take a seat. Apparently, didn't want to do that. But there we go, people. And that's another little place visited, and I completely stuffed up at this one. I got the puzzle wrong by the looks of things, and I upset him. Now I can't find the door to get out. Okay. Oh, great. There's a freaking sentinel. It spotted me. Did you see that? It spotted me as soon as I opened the bloody door. Okay. Um, can I call in my beetly friend? Let's let's do it. Oh, there he is. He's flying above. He's flying aloft. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna. Call, I'm re really gonna spawn him in. I think people. And we're gonna get on him before the the sentinel sees me. Hopefully. Oh, go, 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 right. Okay, the sentinels have been triggered. They're after me. I'm going to have to fly and get away from them as quickly as possible. They are going to send reinforcements, but they will lose sight of me, hopefully. Ah, uh, there we go. Look, I got stuck on a tree. Ah, uh, come on, let's go. I always hit night time again. Day and night cycles happen often on this. Oh, chums, I just noticed the one that I'm actually heading to, the four hours shizzle, is actually a resource depot. That's just going to be swarming with sentinels. And the stuff that I get there, yes, I can sell for a shed load of units. But honestly, I've got no interest in taking on a sentinel depot. Going to the manufacturing facility, which is seven hours away now, is far more in keeping with what I want to do. So I'm, I'm going to start heading towards this, even though it's further away. I mean, at last, I don't really want to even visit the sentinel depot, to be honest. Well, how do there, chums? I'm reloading a restore point, mainly because I've reached a point that's nearish to that um, manufacturing facility that's got a beacon. I've called my ship in. I've spoke to the actual inhabitants of this place. I passed a test and I've unlocked a distress signal. That's all you've missed so far, people. But I'm doing a reload because even though I put it in creative mode so I could build myself, you know, uh, it, it still was acting like I was in survival. So anyways, I'm going to be putting down a little base computer here. This is going to be a little mini base of operations, just for a sec. And I'm going to claim this because, although I'm quite close, I'm not close enough. Now, because this hasn't got a landing pad and it has got a beacon, technically I can claim it as a point of refuge. But it's probably not one that I'm going to keep because it hasn't got a landing pad. I'm not going to put a teleporter here, per se, so... I can get back here, but I'd have to travel back to one that's got a teleporter, you know? I can teleport to this, but I can't really teleport back home, is what I'm saying. So if I do choose to come all the way out here, I'm a little bit on my own. It's just a nodule, is why I'm putting it down here. And how far have I got to go to that manufacturing facility? Where is it? It is over here. That's it. It still says six hours away. But trust me, I'm a lot closer than that. Let me just jump on my beetle and I'll show you how close I am. Because I think it said three hours. And I've been travelling roughly for about... I don't know, about an hour and a bit. So let's have a look. Where's that manufacturing facility now? Oh, it still says six hours. Oh, what the flying fudge? Oh, okay. Well, that, that stuffed it then, hasn't it? Okay, well, it's, it's a month of Sundays away then, people. I mean, it was nine hours at the start. I've been travelling for about an hour. So you're looking at, what, three hours to an hour 
Oh, my days. It's still going to take me another two hours then, maybe, at this rate, to get to that manufacturing facility. Unless that time changes again. Because I, well, I swear, when I was on my Beetle earlier, that said three hours. And that one over there said one hour. It said three hours. I don't know. I don't know what's going on there then. All right, well, anyway, let's scan another creature. Because I still have that ambient mission that I'm trying to do as well, where I'm trying to catalogue everything that's on this planet. So, so far, I've discovered four of the nine creatures. Um, I still need to discover a lot of the flora. I still need to analyse a lot more materials. I've, I've kind of neglected this side mission of mine. So, you know what? I, I, I need to do that as I'm going along and scanning everything. Now, there's another creature right there. We'll scan him. Oh, and there's one just over yonder hill. and get that scanned. But yeah, it's going to take me a long time to get to this manufacturing facility. Um, far longer than what I envisage it would take. All right, we're getting, some, getting this uh, log done relatively quickly now, though. Cool. There we are. We've got an extra mineral added to the collection. Are you a plant? No, you're just set dressing. Okay. Just going around, seeing if we can spot any more question marks while I'm here. Oh, hold on, we've got something there. An organic rock. An inorganic rock, I should say. And, oh, 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 we got another one. So, it looks like we've done a little bit of scanning. Well, oh, there's another creature. How are we doing on the old log now? Okay, let's go and have a look, see. Well, we've only got one more creature left to find on this planet. And we've moved up the numbers a little bit further, which which is which is good. Um, I'm not seeing the last creature, am I? Let's have a look for one more red dot. No, not seeing it right now. Okay, well, I've got my ship here, so I can jump in my ship, out of my ship. This little base of operations, I don't think it's got a galactic trade terminal or anything like that in it. Not that I really need it right now. But next episode, I'll be moving towards that manufacturing facility a little bit more. Might as well hit up this save point here as well. Make a double save. There we are. Yeah. A lot of progress made towards getting to my first manufacturing facility. Will I get the Atlas Pass in my next video? Yeah. I mean, technically, I could delete this. I might as well leave it here, though, just in case I have to come over this way again in the future. Okay, people. Well, I'm finding this to be a fun challenge. Is it an interesting challenge? I would say it is. It is in a roundabout way. I mean, I wish I chose a smaller planet. I wish everything was closer together. Because I've now got swathes of landscape to fly over. I mean, luckily, this is a planet without water. So at least I'm not having to do a shed load of swimming. So you want to find yourself maybe a moon. I'd suggest finding a moon. Because everything's going to be closer together. It's not going to have any water. Try and find yourself a nice lush moon, one that you're really interested in and one that you do want to spend the time on if you're going to be doing this at home. Otherwise, the distance between markers, as you saw there, I got a false representation of time until I put boots on the ground for my beetle. I've just been flying, hammering it with my beetle for ages, thinking, oh, yeah, I've only now got you know, two hours to go, three hours to go. I thought quids in. Looking at it now, it's gone back to six hours. It's almost like I haven't hardly moved. Well, we did start on nine, Steve. So just take that away. You've travelled three hours in one hour. Okay? So hopefully another two hours and maybe I'll be there. But I'm just worried that I'm going to put boots on the ground when I get closer. And it's going to shift again. He's ever-changing sands of time on this planet, people. Anyway, salute to Mondo. And see you next episode. Goodbye, goodbye. And goodbye again. I'm away. Elizabeth Meredith has supported my channel. Thank you, Elizabeth Meredith. Meredith, you back me on Patreon, back me on and on. You helped me get my 3D printer. Heck, you back to winner. That device has done so much for the channel and the meetups. Thank you so much, Elizabeth Meredith, Elizabeth Meredith. I sent you a Viola box, 3D printed and painted by me. Hope you have it in pride of place. Thank you from Captain Steve. From way, way back, Elizabeth.
Elizabeth Meredith has supported my channel. Thank you, Elizabeth Meredith. Meredith. Thank you from Captain Steve.